Hello, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, it's beautiful to see this uh, familiar faces that we have. Anyway, um, i like to start by saying, uh, uh, Mr. Gerard, I I'm going to put him on top of, the, uh, of my list because we were neighbors, we have been neighbors for a long time, so I could see Gary and talk to him about every day. But what I want to get at is that if it wouldn't be for Gary Gerard, this would not be possible whatsoever. So I want you guys to give him a big, big hand. And I don't know who else runs around more and does more than Arnie Morrison. Arnie's all over the place. So, but anyway, um, i like to also, from our committee, thank Anthony Martinez for allowing the facility and doing all the cooking and the food. Uh, um, okay, that's all I have right now, but we're gonna get Mr. Uh, Albino to come and do the Pledge of Allegiance, right, Gary? And then we're gonna we're gonna all sing God bless America. Okay? Pledge of Allegiance, ready, begin. I don't know if I'll need the mic or not, but all of you singing, I don't need to be on the mic. And uh, we're gonna do God bless America. What, what key are we singing it in? In fa. Uh, <laughs> okay. who was very able, capable, and willing to help out at all times. God, we thank you for this great crowd tonight that's come to honor and pay tribute to these great, outstanding Delano athletes. We pray that you will bless all that takes place tonight Bless the food and bless each one here and their families. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, uh, I want to thank all the directors. They, they're gonna, we're going to probably meet next week again to get ready for next year. But we need your help because we don't know who we should induct next year. So it, all of you have phones. And, you, you all have smartphones. I have a dumb phone and it doesn't even work, so. But on the easel, as you enter the doorway, there's an easel and there's a piece of paper. If you could take a picture of that piece of paper, it lists about 55 possible inductees for the next three years. So write back to us uh, if you have somebody that you want to induct. Don't put down, my brother, he was really good. Uh, we, since football ended, we started going to all sports, thanks to Mr. Duran and some other people in force. And so now we cover all sports, but getting information on everybody, 
it is really difficult. I'm looking for something that I brought up here, but since it's been moved. All the Delano records are bound in something about this long and about as wide as the Delano record and about that thick. That's four months of the Delano record. So I go through the Delano records looking for articles about people and all league first team, school record holders, league champions and so forth that we induct. And it takes about four and a half hours a book. And then I have to go back and transcribe my sloppy notes. And then I go to the next book. But I get three books done and spent like 14, 15 hours. Then I can go to the next year. That's why we crammed the years in. Uh, we didn't jump around. 73, 84, no, we're all in the 70s this year up to maybe 1980. Maybe next year we'll, we'll still have to cover the 70s and go maybe up to 1982. But one of the good things about that is it seems like everybody has friends in this era that they were in, in school together. Okay, uh, Mr. Morrison, of course, he makes a video of this and it tells you in there how to get a hold of him, uh, <coughs> find out what the link is, and you can see the whole program. And last year's program was five days long? No. <laughs> about two hours. Yeah, only two hours. Oh, the restrooms are at that end, don't you know? Okay. So our first introducer tonight, if he's not still eating, will be Mr. Albino Duran, who's going to introduce our first three inductees. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Alpina Duran, Athletic Director at Delano High School. Just want to say this was one of the favorite nights of the year for me. It's pretty awesome to see all the former athletes and, and uh, all the memories that uh, everybody brings up at this event. So just want to say thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Okay, our first inductee, unfortunately, couldn't make it this evening. We will, however, read everybody's biographies for the inductees who couldn't make it this evening. Um, our first inductee is Mr. Mike McCarthy, 1979 graduate of Delano High School. Although he has been inducted for football this year, Mr. McCarthy also competed in wrestling and track. In football, he was considered small for his size or for his position. He was a nose guard at 155 pounds. However, Coach Jim Hyatt saw the toughness and the quickness that Mike had and convinced Mike to play nose guard for the Tigers. This led to a very successful senior year where Mike earned first team all league honors. Mike uh, currently works in and around Delano in water well restoration and as a pump electrician. He has three kids, two grandkids, and has lived happily with his second wife of 32 years. He enjoys camping, golfing, fishing, and the Dodgers. Can we get a round of applause for Mr. Mike McCarthy, 2024 Hall of Fame inductee? Our second inductee is Mr. Rudy Dancing. Mr. Rudy Dancing. Mr. Rudy Dancing is a 1980 graduate of Delano High School. He is a Rich Grove product who earned all league defensive end honors for the seven and three Delano Tiger football team. He played running back, cornerback, and defensive end for the Tigers. Uh, inducted for football, but his wrestling accolades were just as impressive. He won multiple winning, uh, multiple wrestling tournaments in high school and in college. While at Portable College, his dual record his sophomore year was 23 and 0. Today, Mr. Densing is going on 40 years of marriage to his lovely wife, Alejandra Alex Densing. They have three daughters, Jessica, Monique, and Alyssa, uh, two son-in-laws, and three beautiful grandchildren. Today, he works as a supervisor for the Delano Elementary School District and is also a flooring contractor. It is with great pleasure that we induct into the 2024 Delano High School Hall of Fame, Mr. Rudy Dancing. Welcome everybody. Nice to see so many familiar faces. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the uh, Hall of Fame committee and, uh, of course, my family and, and uh, 
close friends. But it, it is really nice to see so much people that, that uh, I went to school with, and it's really an honor to be uh, selected as one of the uh, one of the selectees. But uh, clearly, you guys can see that I'm not much for talking. But I, I just wanted to say thank you, guys. Our next inductee is Mr. Chris Butler. Can you walk up here, Mr. Butler? Mr. Chris Butler is a 1979 graduate of Delano High School. He played four years of football, four years of basketball, and the sport he is being inducted for this evening is baseball. In baseball, Mr. Butler was a first team all East Yosemite League pitcher his senior year, where he earned a six and one record as a pitcher. He played first base and designated hitter for the 1979 East Yosemite League co-champion Delano High School Tigers. He credits high school coaches Bob Leamy, Don Noriel, and Lorenzo Morales for being big coaching influences on his life. After high school, Mr. Butler then played college baseball at COS and Portable College. At Portable College, he earned second team all conference as a designated hitter. He played alongside Delano alongside Delano High legends, Martin Lopez, Daryl Duran, and Ruby Hill Jr. After his playing days, Chris also enjoyed playing softball where he became a legend and hit it out of the, the Pixie Ballpark at 460 feet, where it may or may not have been a pitcher against him. Uh, he also loved playing chess. Uh, he loves participating in Texas Hold'em tournaments. And with his late mother, Lucille, and daughter, Isis, have ran the Grand Slam USA batting range and gym across the street since 1989. It is with great pleasure that we induct into the 2024 Delano High School Hall of Fame, Mr. Chris Butler. I'm not gonna say too much. Um, pretty honored being here. I didn't expect this. Um, I want to thank the committee, even though he said not to thank them. I want to thank all my family, my friends that came to support me. Uh, I want to thank my mom. Who taught me how to be strong. And instilled the confidence in me to be the best I could be. Thank you very much. baseball as a sophomore to compete in the Delano tournament, which no longer exists. In 1981, he gave up two earned runs in almost 16 tournament pitching innings and had a record of eight wins, three losses for the season in league play, one seven, lost one. He was all league pitcher in 1981 and baseball MVP, participated in the Exeter and Bakersfield All-Star baseball games and uh, he won honors in both those tournaments, uh, both those all-star games as the like, outstanding pitcher. And uh, he was an outstanding hitter all three varsity seasons. I, I knew he was a great pitcher, but when I started looking up the records, every game he's getting two hits, driving in runs and everything, so I didn't know he was a great hitter as well as a pitcher. Uh, he went on to Bakersfield College in 1982, posted a six and two record, and was second team all-conference with an ERA of 1.98, which is better than any of the Dodgers that I know of. <laughs> Martin Lopez. Yay, Martin. All right. Thank you, Mr. First, I want to thank God for all the blessings he has given me. 
I'd like to thank the DHS Hall of Fame Committee for choosing me as one of this year's class of 2024 inductees. I also want to thank some very special people that are supporting me here tonight. My wife, Sylvia, my daughters and son-in-law, Christina and Andres, Mariah and David, my brother Ramiro, my nephew Raymond and his fiance Felisa, and my compadres T and Norma, Bobby and Yvonne. When Rachel Mendoza called me to congratulate me on being chosen into the DHS Hall of Fame, I was shocked. The first and only induction ceremony I had attended before was just for the football players. That's why I was kind of shocked. So when she mentioned it was for baseball, I was relieved. <laughs> Later I found out that, that the Hall of Fame was open to other sports, which was a great idea. If not, I wouldn't be here tonight. Our class of 81 was very special. We were a very close group of guys on and off the field. We had a lot of great players on the team. We won the league championship every year. Baseball was the only sport that our class dominated every year. Playing baseball at Bakersfield College was fun. But playing baseball at DHS was, e uh, DHS was even better. We had a lot of good times playing baseball on, and on the bus ride home, especially when we won. When we lost on the road games, it was a long and quiet ride home. But I remember many of those. After winning the league championship our senior year, we played in the play Valley playoffs. We lost in the first round and were eliminated. That devastated us because we knew we were a much better team than that. I was chosen as an all-league player my senior year and was selected to play in an all-star game in Exeter. The all-star game was very cool because I had the chance to play with some of the best players from around our league. Playing throughout my four years of high school, I learned about the Morris Blanket Award. The Morris Blanket Award was a very big honor to earn. I would see the banners hanging in the basketball gym with all those names from prior years and said to myself that it would be great to get my name on it someday. I set my goal and accomplished it. And it was an honor for me to see my name along with all the others. Tonight's accomplishment is even bigger for me. To be recognized as a DHS Hall of Famer is an even greater honor. Thank you very much again to the DHS Hall of Fame Committee for choosing me as one of the 2024 class. Congratulations to all the other inductees. Thank you. Maybe in Ortega, while I'm talking about you, I need you to come up here and they can all see you. Walk slowly so they can focus in. Okay, uh, Raymond played two uh, many positions in high school, had a strong frosh and JV team before being called up to varsity as a sophomore to compete in the Delano tournament. Man, a lot of people got called up to varsity as sophomores. Um, he, his bases loaded single against Bakersfield High his junior year helped Delano High School uh, rally to win the game and the tournament title. I don't know, somewhere along the line when I read about those uh, rallies, it seemed like you scored like nine runs in the ninth inning or something. And what I remember the most is Ruby coming out of the dugout, running across the field to give me a hug once I got to third base. Those are the memories that I cherish. Well, you gotta win to get those memories. Okay. <laughs> Um, as a senior, he was all late, hit four home runs, and batted five, I'm sorry, 300. No, no. no. Look, that's why you're here. You're going to straighten out the record. Yeah. He started Bakersfield College and played three years in the Philadelphia Phillies organization. At Delano High, he won the Ray Frederick Dedication Award and competed at Exeter's All-Star Baseball Game. So get us straightened out here on the years and the awards and the championships, okay? Ray Ortega. Thank you. Mom, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mom? Perfect. All right. Sorry about that. This is definitely a great honor. Thank you guys all very much. I'm, I'm just, I think the, ha the most happiest thing for me is to see old classmates. Old classmates that I got to play with, succeed with, and had a great time with. I want to thank my mother and father for attending. Thanks for hanging in there all these years. <laughs> uh, my sister, Vicki, who also had her hand at uh, playing softball. Uh, maybe 
she'll be up here someday. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, my sister-in-law, Juanita, uh, my brother, Javier, couldn't make it, so she's here in, in his absence. And lastly, my lovely wife, Sandra. Um, she didn't know my past career in sports. She loves me for who I am. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I really am honored that I'm celebrated today with a bunch of great guys that I got to play with. Thank you very much. Okay, the next award goes to the person who got the big hug. <laughs> uh, Ruben A. Hill Jr. Like his dad and brother before him, he was a standout yeah. athlete playing quarterback in football on the varsity basketball team and gaining second team honors one season in baseball and then first team honors in baseball his senior year. He was on the varsity for at least two seasons in all three sports. He was co-winner of Delano High School Service Award for baseball and I'm certain that he would be very proud of his young son. I call you young. If you're younger than 60, you're young. So this son who's uh, going to accept the award and speak tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. I want to thank the uh, committee. Uh, you know, growing up around all these legends, you hear the stories and you hear the names of, uh, of just a whole bunch of small town legends and you just hope that one day growing up in a family as uh, successful as ours that you can one day live up to the legacy so i'm just honored and i appreciate this um and i want to say thank you to everybody who thought of my dad uh it's been a couple years since he hasn't been here um so our family will accept this with great honor and i will remember this for the rest of my life so i appreciate you all thank you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next honoree is Marcus Reina. He let me know earlier that he could not make it, but we want to talk about him briefly because he can see this on the video of tonight. Uh, and all league first team outfielder his senior year, he had moved to varsity as a sophomore. Everybody moves to varsity as a sophomore for the Delano Tournament, in which he socked a two-run triple to help Delano rally for seven, well, was seven runs in the last inning. I thought it was 35 runs. Seven runs in the last inning to beat Bakersfield High, our favorite opponent. Uh, his senior year, he belted a, a three-run homer to beat Menachi. Six one homered and tripled in a 5-4 win over Exeter. Hit two doubles uh, in a 4-3 tournament loss to Bakersfield and hammered a three-run homer in a 4-3 win over Exeter. He also represented Delano High School in the Exeter All-Star Baseball game. I can't believe all these people are hitting home runs because I haven't seen a Delano player hit a ball over the fence since I was young. Okay. okay, the next person I'll introduce is Dean Tolson, who I just discovered a little while ago and warned him that on his plaque, they spelled his last name wrong, but we'll mail it to him. Oh, that reminds me. We have two people that came the farthest tonight. And that's Marie Smith. We'll be introduced later. She just took the little trek from Georgia. And Anthony Dale Frost, who came a little ways from Texas. Is there anybody that came that far? Is either one? I don't think so. OK, uh, next is Dean Tolson. If you've read his story, you laugh half the time and cry the other half. As a junior, he placed third in singles in the league tournament in tennis. His senior year teams would not play in Delano because of the court conditions. There was grass growing on the court. Nobody wanted to come to Delano to play tennis. So, and Delano High had no tennis coach his senior year either. And Delano was not an official league member, but played practice matches all away matches against league schools. Tolson won the league tournament 
all in straight sets. He also gained the athletic department's Reynolds Trophy Scholarship Award with a 3.97 GPA. That was the days when 4.0 was the perfect grades. Nowadays, they got five and six, and I don't know how they get them, but anyway. And so I'd like to introduce Dean Tillerson, who will tell you as the first tennis player to get in the Delano High School Hall of Fame. All right, thank you, Mr. Gerard. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this short and, and kind of follow the trend and re read the room, but um, I've got to talk about that, that, uh, that senior year a little bit because it was a special time. It was uh, the, uh, the, the <clears throat> first of all, you're always an underdog. You're a tennis player from Delano. We played against schools that had country clubs and people who had been coached all their lives. And if, if you grew up in Delano uh, and played tennis, it's because you found an old wooden racket and you played in the streets without a net. And uh, that's how you learn to play. And so we were always underdogs. My senior year, Proposition 13, the courts fell apart. They condemned them. They canceled the season on us. And eventually, we fought back. We said, OK, we don't need a coach. We don't need cars. We don't need anything. We'll just, we'll just show up and play if you get the schedule put back together. Um, but that year was, was, was special because we were, we were the ultimate underdogs. We, uh, we actually um, we, 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 we really played up the rebel underdog persona. We wore the rattiest shirts and, and shorts we could wear the matches. We tried to look like what they expected Delano tennis players to look like. And, uh, but we won, and we won a bunch of matches, and we finished, uh, I call them official, the others might call them the unofficial league standings, but we certainly finished higher in the league. We didn't win the league, but finished higher in the league than any tennis team that, uh, uh, that we remember. And it was a very special time, because it was the camaraderie with, with that, that, that group of guys, especially with no adult supervision whatsoever, uh, was, uh, was, was, was really special. Uh, people like uh, David Vandegrift and Ken Hennessy and David, David Rich. Uh, it, was a, it was a special time. So thank you. Uh, I, have to, I have to say this, if I, if I, if I didn't should have from my, the mic. I have to say this. I'm going to thank Mr. Gerard. Uh, I always credit Mr. Uh, Mr. Gerard for teaching me how to write. A lot of other people tried to teach me how to write, but Mr. Gerard is the person that taught me how to write, which has been a huge uh, advantage and a huge skill in my career as a, as a re professor and researcher. Uh, writing is a big part of the job. Uh, writing uh, with, you know, what, 100 or so articles published. Uh, writing is the thing that allows you to, it gives you a big advantage in being able to get your ideas out there, uh, make sure people understand why your ideas are important. Uh, and, and I will always be uh, grateful for Mr. to Mr. Gerard for that. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Oh, yeah, I see you. Oh, yeah, 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 so the yeah, 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 Paul, she was a standout in volleyball for Delano High, and the winner was often high score for the basketball girls and won all tournament selection and second team all league in basketball. But she's being honored for softball, where she was uh, as a senior all league first team and batted 588. I don't know how you do that, but that's pretty good if you know anything about baseball, right, Brian Byron? Okay, our next inductee who is present is Caroline Duran, the other softball player being inducted. And uh, I look back, I couldn't believe it. Girl sports were only tennis that began back in the 1920s. Swimming started in 1955, and no other girl sports until the 70s when they got uh, softball and girls basketball and track. They didn't exist till the 70s. So I always think all of you people who are honored tonight grad, uh, graduated probably in the 1970s, maybe 1980. You lived in the best of times where a lot of great athletes and a lot of great opportunities existed. And the people these days, I, I feel sorry for them because they, they don't have the success or the drive that all of you in the 1970s did. Okay, Caroline, just like Pam, Caroline was a standout 
for Tiger girls in all three sports. Those were the days when you didn't specialize in football or specialize in baseball. You just expected to go from one sport to the next to the next, and that was the way it was. Uh, she was honorable mention all league in volleyball, played varsity basketball and in softball, hit 359 to earn first team all league honors. I don't even know who her coach was, but she will remember. She had a grand slam in a 7-6 loss to Arvin at year's end. She won the school service award for volleyball, gained the Babe Ruth Sportsmanship Award, and a Delano Youth Foundation scholarship. So she walked off all these awards as a senior. So I'd like to be happy to introduce Caroline Duran. Thank you to the Hall of Fame Committee for this honor and recognition. I owe much to my teammates, some of whom are here tonight, uh, who taught me the value of teamwork. I'm also deeply grateful to my family, those who have passed and those who are present tonight for their unwavering support. To my brothers who pushed me to become a better athlete and to my mom who always motivated me to strive for more, to be more. And of course my coaches, Mrs. Stahl, who encouraged me to never give up even as we continue to lose. It was the first year of girls volleyball at Delano High, so we struggled. But by the end of the season, things began to click, and I played another three years. And then my coach, Louis perez Leon, who pushed me as a third baseman to face my fears, even if it meant getting hit by the ball. He challenged me, but he made me a better player. It is through their collective influence over the years that I am where I am today. My journey is a testament to the enduring spirit of pursuit. The beauty of camaraderie, the support of family, and the power of following our God-given passions, which for me leads to a successful career in communications after graduating from San Diego State. Participating in sports at Delano High helped me develop a strong foundation as I attained skills in leadership, teamwork, resilience, and so much more, which I utilize today. I am honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, joining my brothers Ruben and Daryl. Yes, we are a competitive bunch. My heartfelt thanks to the committee for reminding me of a wonderful journey in years past and great memories at Delano High. Thank you. Inductee is Dr. Fernando Bravo, but he's not able to be here tonight, but we want to report on him. Last year, Roberto Villa was the first soccer player inducted, and I asked him, who should be the next one who following in your footsteps? And he said, Dr. Fernando Bravo, because I led the team in one area, he led them in another, we kept them together. And uh, I remember Roberto Villa last year telling us that the coaches just knew that they were supposed to be conditioned, but they knew nothing about soccer. So Roberto and Fernando and another player, I can't recall, sort of, they led the team on and the coaches were there to support them. And they went on to make it to the Valley playoffs in the first season of soccer. Uh, at the 2023 Hall of Fame, I mentioned about Villa. Uh, Bravo was co-tri-captain, achieved all league as a junior while helping Delano High School in 1976 to the Valley Playoffs in the first year of Tiger soccer. As a senior, Bravo and the Tigers were fifth in the Valley, and Bravo was the Delano High School Morris Blanket Award winner and the top player uh, on the team. Our next uh, inductee, Mike, you want to come up here? Okay, I gotta go back. My, I haven't seen my. Um, <laughs> I, I I miss Robert Sanchez, and the reason I miss him, I forgot. We never were able to contact uh, Robert Sanchez, and he was a great athlete in three sports, but we chose him for baseball, where he was all league. So his write-ups on the previous page, so we didn't get to invite him, but as I understand it, he lives in Idaho or out of state anyway. So I'm gonna go back on him so he'll be on the video anyway. Uh, as a senior, he was named Delano High's 
I'm standing male, all-round athlete. He played Tiger football, earned second-team all-league honors in basketball, and first-team all-league in baseball. He played in the Exeter All-Star Baseball game, representing Delano High School. I can still see him. I can't remember what happened yesterday, but I can remember 45, 50 years ago when he played all those sports. Okay, thank you, Suzanne, for straightening me out. That's what happens when you get 87, you forget things. Okay, uh, now I go into swimming. Michael Heary, he was chosen to Illinois High School's outstanding senior athlete. His, well, I give a time here, you don't know the time. In the individual medley, broke Tim Dawson's school record. Tim was inducted last year in the Hall of Fame. As a junior, Michael posted a 1026 backstroke school record, which he broke with a one flat mark in the 1980 Valley Meet. And if I get all these times and words wrong, I want him to straighten me out. I'm sure he will. He was starting goalie in soccer. I don't know, a lot of the soccer players uh, come from other sports. But, and also, lately at Delano High School, they don't get guys out for spring tennis, so they go to the soccer team and grab them out. So that's good, too. So they get to go to another sport. Uh, he was starting goalie for soccer his last two Delano High years, and all four years, Delano High School was second in the league and reached the Valley playoffs. Here he was also all-league water polo and continued the sport, as you'll read in the, his write-up, uh, in his days at the United States Air Force Academy. And he gives some connection between Gary Schaefer, his high school coach, and some similarities to his college coach, which he knows a lot more than I do. So Michael Heary, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm really honored to be considered amongst all the other uh, athletes here tonight, uh, like Martin Lopez as my classmate. I just wanted to point out, like some of the coaches pointed out, uh, a lot of us played uh, three sports all four years, and uh, I was really glad that it was encouraged to talk to Mr. Noriel about it, that we all played uh, three sports, and uh, we didn't all just uh, specialize on one particular sport, so it's a real honor to be considered uh, and be inducted with all the other inductees. <clears throat> I also want to thank my family. Uh, my mom, Juliana, is here, my sister, Liz, and my wife, Elizabeth. And so, when you become a swimmer, you end up being a swim family. Uh, we do morning workouts, afternoon workouts, double workouts every day. And I want to thank my mom for being my biggest supporter, uh, getting up every morning, taking us to practice, cooking us breakfast, come back after evening practice, having dinner ready for us, Saturday practice. There's a lot of practice involved in swimming. And so I want to thank her. I also want to thank my coach, Gary Schaefer, Gary was a pretty tough coach and it really helped me well when I was in college swimming at uh, playing water polo at the Air Force Academy. Gary would be considered a, an old school coach and that's the way the Air Force was too. Uh, he instilled a lot of attributes, discipline, hard work, self-sacrifice, um, teamwork, putting uh, your teammates before yourself. And that served me well playing water polo at the Air Force Academy and also my career in the Air Force. And, uh, and later on in uh, life. And I also want to thank all the teachers. You know, it was really a special time back in the 70s growing up at Delano High School because all the teachers were our coaches. Uh, you don't necessarily see that now, so a big thank you to all the coaches that were uh, teachers too because uh, they put a lot of hard work in. Like Gary Schaefer had to come to practice every day at 6 a.m., teach school, and then we didn't get home till 5 o'clock, so it was a full day for the coach as well as uh, the swimmers. Just want to talk about why water polo and swimming are great sports. Water polo team sport, just like football and all the other sports, you're relying on your teammates. Uh, you're only strong as your weakest link, and Gary Schaefer really uh, emphasized that point with us to play together and play for each other. And then in swimming, the beauty of that sport is an individual sport, kind of like track, is the harder you work, uh, the more you're rewarded. And that taught me a lot of discipline and hard work, and it always pays off. I also want to thank some of my teammates. Uh, in swimming, the uh, teammate I think of the most is Scott Whittington. I started club swimming in uh, eighth grade, and Scott was on the team. He was the fastest one on the team, so I trained uh, very hard with him. We were very competitive in practice, and Scott kept me very humble. We swam together all four years in high school. 
And Scott also played water polo, because back then you also played on teams because your friends wanted you to help you out on the team. And then I also want to talk about why, why do we play these sports? Well, if you're good at a sport, you're very competitive about it, <clears throat> like swimming or water polo, and you're good at it. But why do we play the other sports, like Martine was talking about playing football? Well, I think the reason we play these other sports is because of our friendships. And I just want to talk about how endearing those friendships are. And I want to mention one friend, why I played soccer, even though that wasn't my best sport, uh, my dear friend, Matt Pandle. He uh, talked me into coming out for the team. He was a year ahead of me. His brother, John, was the goalkeeper on the team. They needed a backup goalkeeper until John graduated, and then I played the next two years. And it's just really special moments, and uh, I think about those teammates very much. The thing I remember most when uh, Mr. Gerard told me about this, uh, this, this honor, when you started to look through all the stuff, you don't remember your times. You don't remember what place you got. You don't remember which games you won or lost, but man, you sure do remember your friends and those endearing friendships. So I really wish that Scott Whittington and Matt Handel would be here today. Scott died 30 years ago in a motorcycle crash, and we lost Matt just last year. And I think of them every day. Thank you very much. second and last swimmer to be honored is a young lady whom I had in freshman English. So she was probably about 14 years old then. I was probably only 40. So um, Karen, uh, her mark for the 50 freestyle is probably, because nobody knows anything for sure in swimming, still stands as a school record, but records have never been updated. Uh, she's also uh, held the school swimming mark for the, what then was the 100 yard freestyle. Now it would be the 100 meter freestyle. And as far as I know, you still hold both sprint records in the freestyle. So Karen King, would you come up and get your swimming award as an outstanding swimmer for the girls from the Not, not by 
Coach Terry Moreland's Tigers. And I, I'm almost positive I can tell you that those four straight championships, they never had one since. Um, at the 135 pounds, he placed second in the Yosemite Division meet and won the consolation title in the state tournament. He also was a standout at Bakersfield College and at Vanguard University. By the way, all you people, when you competed in Atlanta, you were in the Yosemite Division. That was with the big boys and the big girls in, in the sports. Nowadays, the Delano schools bragged that we won Division 5 or we won Division 6, which is down there with the lower class of people. Okay, uh, Anthony, fill me in on what happened since Delano High School. Thank you. Well, the first thing I want to say is it really was a team effort to win in wrestling because when I first got there in 68, we had never been very successful. And then when Coach Moreland showed up, we become much more skilled, to be honestly, to point that out. But I want to point out a, a couple of things. It's like, it was, I was second in the league as a junior, and I got some scholarship offers after that. And there were three people that really affected my life, and I'll always be grateful to them. I retired as an educator, and I use these people as role models for myself, whether I was teaching at high school or even with college kids, it didn't matter. And that was Gene Beck, who was my coach for four years in wrestling. I don't think I ever knew a more grounded and moral person in my life than Coach Beck. Coach Beck was like a rock. And then, I haven't heard anybody mention it, but Ray Fredericks. Ray Fredericks did so much for all the different sports at our school. And one thing that him and Coach Beck did was they asked me not to go out for football my, my senior year. And it really kind of hurt my feelings. I mean, I was looking forward to playing football. But they pointed out to me that if I got hurt during football, I may not be getting the scholarships that I was offered as wrestling. And you know, that's uncommon in sports a lot of times, unfortunately, that people put their team ahead of what's best for the student. I couldn't say enough about Terry because Terry raised us to a level of competence in wrestling that lasted the entire time he was here. And for those of you that don't know, he's on Facebook and he's now living in Tennessee because I hear from him about three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> also, in the little spiel that we had, I, honestly, I was undefeated my senior year in league and senior league getting to league championship. That didn't mean anything to me compared to lifting the league trophy after a three-year battle of trying to become relevant. And we were much closer to the team than you would think a wrestling team would be. We wrestled for each other. We didn't wrestle for individual accolades. And I, I can't believe how blessed I was with the people that I was a teammate with for those four years. Uh, lastly, my wife, who looked over my little blurb in there, didn't realize till the night that I didn't mention my family. Do you know how much trouble I got into that? <laughs> so I'm gonna rectify that. I've been so blessed in my life, starting with the fact that I married the prettiest girl in Midland, Texas. <laughs> and, yeah, that's just a fact. We have three boys. I have a basketball team full of granddaughters and one grandson. And in the last year, we've gotten one great-granddaughter. So, again, I want to thank everybody with the committee, even though I said not to, but people have said that it's really been a blessing. And the last thing I'll say, one of the biggest things in my life was when I was a junior, I started taking my brother with me to summer wrestling for AAU, which is freestyle, not part of the school. My brother is in the high school hall of fame already. So. That's the way I look at it. My time at Delano was a very blessed time. I'm thankful to everybody that helped me while I was there. Thank you. 
Thank you. Dave, be sure you don't share this with your brother Larry, but you would have been in the Hall of Fame ahead of him, except that we thought you graduated in 1969, which now everybody from 69 back is a charter member, but when we found out you were in the 70s, you're in, but he already beat you in, but you would have been in ahead of him. Don't tell him. That. No, it's only on the video. Everybody's going to hear that. And now it's over the whole world. Okay, our, our next inductee is Danny Ordiz. I think when he first came to Delano, I remember his mother bringing up his brother Benny, and he, he was on the Rotary Little League team that I coached with Manny, Monty Marshall, and Benny was a gem, and we got him on our roster somehow, and the first game, he did, Benny did pretty well. Benny pitched a no-hitter. <laughs> I remember seeing Danny at practice, and one day, Danny was about this tall. He's a little bit taller now. And I had a baseball, I sort of flipped it at him, and he jumped out of the way, and then I realized he wasn't a baseball player. <laughs> but he was a great wrestler and a great golfer. Uh, as you read in the program, Danny Ortiz compiled a 22 and eight dual match record in his senior season helping the Tiger wrestlers go undefeated in the EYL matches and win the league tournament. He played six in the Valley meet in 1973, played football three years, golf for four years, helped lead the Tiger golf squad. His participation in three sports helped him earn the coveted white sweater athletic award his senior year. He was the California Scholarship Federation life member and achieved the highest level in the Athenian society. Now, these days, nobody knows what a white sweater is anymore, and nobody knows what the Athenians are, but you people from the 70s, you should know, and if you brought somebody that doesn't know, you can explain it to them later. Danny Ortiz, where are you? Okay, um, Gary's right. I, I met Gary, I was probably about eight, year, eight years old, that's 60 years ago. He still looks the same, right? Oh my gosh. And Ruben, my basketball coach in elementary school, that's probably why he wrestled, because he couldn't play basketball. Anyway, um, it's great to, to see you all here. And uh, so Roger Gagliano, he's the one that said, hey, Danny, you're, you're going to um, elect you to the Hall of Fame. And the first thing that came to mind was the old adage, um, the older you get, the better you work. <laughs> yeah, so it's been 50 years since I've been on the mat, right? So uh, I, guess, I guess I got a lot better. So thank you for this. And, and also thank Karen. I think my brother graduated with Karen in 1970 there. And Dale, I wrestled with Dale and his brother. So thank you for being here. And thank you for being here because I'm not the oldest one here. <laughs> thank you. But really, um, you can read what I wrote down there. But the main part of that is I want to dedicate this to my brother. You know, Benny, unfortunately, he passed away in 2018. Um, he wrestled a bit, and that's how he encouraged me to wrestle, and that's how I got in, interested in the sport. You know, Benny was a proud Delano High School Tiger, and uh, many knew about his talents. Um, he was a three-sport athlete. He was a running back, a starting running back um, for the varsity football team. He was a musician. He was first-year um, clarinet, and um, he was a leader. He was the ASP student body president. So he was a he's a great brother, and without him, I probably wouldn't be here. And of course, my parents, um, I wouldn't be here. And um, so I really dedicate this to him for his guidance. He was hardworking, smart, kind, and um, and also. I, I, I just can't go on how, how much he influenced my life. I also like to thank my family who's here. I have four daughters, 
12 grandchildren, well, 11 and one on the way. And um, four of the boys are here. Thank you for being here. My wife of 40. <laughs> well, you know, it's. No, we don't know. <laughs> Four years, yes, and um, all my my daughters and, and my son-in-law is here. Thank you for coming. And I'd like to thank the uh, Hall of Fame committee for selecting me, and uh, thank you all for coming tonight.
He went on to third place in the Yosemite Division and third in the Valley Meet to qualify for the state meet, where he did not place but did not a record of three wins and two losses. As a senior, he was named Atlanta High School's outstanding senior wrestler. So come on up here, Jimmy, and tell him your story. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I just would just like to thank, express my utmost uh, gratitude to the Hall of Fame induction committee for the honor I am receiving today. When I was a kid playing sports all those years ago, I did it simply because I love sports and the opportunity to provide me to spend time with, with my brothers, family, and friends. When I play sports, I give it my all. Never did I think it would land me inducted into the Atlanta High School Sports Hall of Fame. Playing sports helped teach me valuable life lessons, like how easy life is when you go with the flow and follow the rules. How important it is to be a team player. Because all I am blessed and thankful for those memories and <coughs> express because my brothers are no longer here to laugh or reminisce about those one time. With thank you, Hall of Fame Committee, for the, for this honor and to my mom for pushing me, for pushing us in the energetic kids of hers ahead, to keep out of her hair outdoors to play sport. I just encourage our youth to get outdoors more and just play, be kids, play sport, make friends, be a part of something bigger than yourself. There is a life out there beyond the computer gaming and on, online social media. And Peace, God bless everyone, and thank you for this grand honor. I, I just want to thank everyone. Jimmy or Rosie that wrote that that was in the book that I kept up, but that was inspiring to me. I hope it is, it is inspiring to you. I'm going to give credit to Rosie because I had her in freshman English. I never had Jimmy in college. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next uh, person is not here tonight. Myrtle Henderson. Uh, Milan tried numerous ways to reach her on is it Facebook. Yeah, and she never responded to Milan's Facebook thing. That's why we love to have Milan on the committee because Arnie knows that Jordan and I, that Facebook stuff, we don't have a clue what that's all about. Uh, she received all league first team selection for basketball girls after a fabulous senior season. She led the scoring for Kern, Tulare, and Kings Counties with 368 points in 15 games for an average of 24 points per game. She, her, I think her 43 points in a single game probably still stands as a school record. She also played varsity volleyball for the Lady Tigers. Well, if she scored 43 points, it reminds me that Delano played girls from Shafter this year. And Delano only scored eight points in the game and Shafter girls had 90. So uh, things have changed from the days of Merle Henderson and some other great players. Okay, up next, uh, Jerry Ankahan is going to introduce two of the record holders in his book that he has for sale. And then we're going to have Suzanne Villarose uh, introduce the next two people who will receive awards. Here's Jerry. You didn't know I was working today. How are you? Well, um, I'm excited to be here again uh, for the Hall of Fame. Um, I was able to present uh, Helen Lopez last year as a Hall of Famer, and like I said last year, there's five athletes at Delano High School that I consider the gold standard in track and field. One is Helen Lopez. The other one is Kaylee Sims that just graduated two years ago. Cindy Franco is number three. These next two, by far, are the best athletes we've ever had at, at Delano High School. And 
this uh, recipient today is, is actually a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine. She's been on my staff at Delano High School for the last 13 years. Uh, she's very well respected in my opinion. Mr. Gerard is Mr. Delano High School. Rita Banks is Miss Delano High School. Rita, please come up. <laughs> First of all, I want to give, give honor to God for keeping me alive for this many years and uh, keeping me in good health. Uh, and I thank uh, Coach, I thank Mr. Gerard, and I, I thank some of my teammates, which is Maurice, Hel um, Helen Lopez, Caroline Duran, Pam Holstone, you know, they're all uh, in here today. And um, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you. I met her for the first time this evening, and I, but I've known about her since I've been, I went into high school. I went in 1980, and uh, at the time, Dale Stanford was the coach at that time, had all the school record books, and this lady was all over it, all over it. Uh, two town Valley champion in the long jump, and she's still today the school record holder in the long jump. This is Maurice Smith. <laughs> Somebody thinks enough of you to honor you with that, even if it's just thank you. You you owe that for that recognition to be able to show up. Because we it's a lot of people that showed up for all of us here that were athletes and, and we threw our lives with somebody that's been showing up. So first, they're gonna be mad at me, but I don't care. Because I'm at the mic now, so I don't care. I would like my family and friends. I have two friends that came with me because I live in, in Decatur, Georgia right now. And we drove nonstop almost overnight. We left Tuesday morning, got here Wednesday, last night at midnight to make sure that we were here. I, I, I have two friends that followed me from Alabama here to, just to support me, so that's important. But I would like all of them, they told me, well, you know, I said, how many can we bring? Because, you know, we, we, we run deep. Yeah. I said, they said, well, you know, if you, I, call, I said, let me call you back. I called back, and then he said, well, how many? I said, well, he says, well, what about as long as you don't have about 30? I said, well, I don't have 30. <laughs> I do have about 26, though. <laughs> and all of my family and friends can stand just to see who, who I want to you for the things that you did, for the person that you were, and the people's lives that you had some impact on influence. So I am thankful for this. You don't know how much it means. And that's it. <laughs> Best clothes, 
best everything. Anyway, I'm here to put in a plug for the true sportsmen of all Delano High School sports. The cheerleaders. Come on, girls, I know you're out there. The cheerleaders. We're there at every football game, every basketball game, wrestling. Um, I sat at the first soccer matches where you couldn't see the either end of the field because of the fog. We just waited until they ran into view, cheered, and then they ran back out of view on foggy nights. So cheerleaders, we are there. We're unrecognized. It's okay. Now I'm going to introduce um, the, our next two recipients. Um, I'm going to introduce um, Anthony Gonzalez, who is going to introduce Hubert Brown. Boy, I feel like I'm back in school with Mr. Gerard up here telling everybody, sit down, get up, over there. <laughs> He's still doing He's it. He's still doing it, yes. Well, um, again, my name is Anthony Gonzalez, and I've been asked to say a few words about uh, Hubert Rabinon. It's an honor to introduce the next inductee, Hubert Rabinon. Hubert is not with us today because he passed away on December 17, 2021. Hubert and I were the best of friends, and that is why I feel honored to highlight his high school athletic career and personal life. I'll, I'll start with his personal life after high school. On December 1st, 1979, Hubert married Janet, and over 42 years together, they built a beautiful life together, blessed with two children, son Zachary and daughter Taylor. Hubert served his community in the following way. He was president of the Greater Delano Area Youth Foundation. Also served on Delano Parks and Recreation Commission. Delano Harvest Holidays, Filipino Community of Delano, President of Delano Chamber of Commerce, Philippine Weekend Grand Marshal and, and Committee Member, Central Valley Basketball Officials Association Member, North Kern Cemetery District Board Member, Delano Chamber of Commerce Man of the Year, Delano Union School District Board Member. Now let's move on to his high school athletic career. Although Hubert played baseball all four years in high school, he was an outstanding athlete in basketball for Delano High School. I first met Hubert in 1972 as a freshman. Hubert was very shy and quiet and weighed about 95 pounds with a jacket on. This guy was <laughs> light. We were high school classmates during our four years at Delano High School. I was privileged to be a teammate with Hubert during our junior and senior years. During our junior year on the JV basketball team, I didn't play much, but I had the opportunity to watch Hubert become a very good basketball player from the bench. He was a great teammate with a quiet sense of humor. During his senior year, Hubert became a really good basketball player and had a loud sense of humor and would tease his teammates with X-rated jokes, okay? That was Hubert, he came out of his shell. It was amazing that I had the opportunity to watch my best friend play basketball and become an outstanding player and all-star. Hubert gained all league and first team basketball honors, averaging 17 points per game as a senior. After graduation from high school, Hubert went on to play basketball at Porterville College and Cal State Bakersfield. He was proud to be the first and only Roadrunner basketball player from Delano at that time. Later in our personal lives, Hubert and I would get together with our families and friends to celebrate birthdays, holidays, barbecues, community, and sporting events. At a family barbecue, Hubert mentioned to me that it would be nice if we both got inducted into the Delano High School Athletic Hall of Fame together. I told him that it would be awesome as best friends to be inducted together. Well, Hubert is not here with us today but he's been inducted to God's Hall of Fame in heaven. Congratulations to Hubert Rabinon and his family, and God bless my best friend, Hubert.
the Ravenol family. Sorry, my too close, too far. Good. Um, on behalf of the Ravenol family, I would just like to thank the committee for this lovely honor. On behalf of our late father, he was an amazing man, as you all heard. Um, phenomenal basketball and baseball player. Um, he wanted to be a three-star, three-sport athlete, but unfortunately, like Mano said, he was a little too small. Uh, but um, yeah, thank you so much for this. Um, I remember as a child, I don't have many memories of him playing basketball, but I do have many memories of watching him referee. And every time he refed a game at DHS, he would take me with him, and he'd point it to the Morris Lincoln and say, hey, see that up there? My name's on there. Along with Brian Eno and his best friend, Anthony Gonzalez. And I just always remember him having so much pride in that, and his accomplishment, and how proud he was to be a Tiger, and to be the amazing athlete that he was. So on behalf of him, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron Gonzalez. Some of you may know my dad, Anthony Gonzalez, of DHS's class of 1976. My dad was born in Delano, California, November 15, 1957, to Lucio and Esther Gonzalez. He's been happily married to my mother, Arlene Villarreal Gonzalez, for 42 years and has two kids, me and my sister Aubrey. <laughs> my dad has been playing golf since the fifth grade, and early on, it was apparent that he excelled in his favorite sport during his preteen years. When entering Delano High in 1972, he was a multi-sport athlete that played basketball and football, but is being inducted tonight for golf. Playing four years of varsity golf, he won the EYL championship his sophomore year and took second in the Southern Area Qualifying Championship. The summer of 74, he attended the Billy Casper Golf Academy and was selected to play with Billy Casper himself, a Hall of Fame professional golfer. Junior year, he qualified for the Valley Championships and earned the service award at the DHS All Sports Banquet. His senior year, he posted a record of seven, two, and one, with an average of 38, placing fifth in the EYL Championships and fourth in the CIF Central Valley Championships. His score of 79 was more than good enough to qualify for the CIF State Championship held at the San Diego Country Club. He received the Morris Blanket Block D Award for golf his senior year a testament to his dedication and passion for the sport. It is with great honor that I introduce my father and favorite golfer, Anthony Lucio Gonzalez. Congrats, Dad. My son Aaron, he read that exactly the way I wrote it. <laughs> First, I would like to congratulate the other inductees, and it is great to see classmates and friends tonight. Today is a sad and happy day for me. My mom and dad both passed away last year. My mom was my greatest fan in my early years playing golf. <clears throat> Especially during my high school years, before all of my golf matches and tournaments, she would hug me, make the sign of the cross, kiss me on my cheek, tell me to do my best and pray for me. Growing up, I liked to play football, basketball, and baseball, but my dad introduced me to golf when I was about 10 or 11 years old. I love playing golf with my dad, but more importantly, I love being with my dad. My dad could see that I wanted to, to get better, so he told me that I was going to get lessons from a professional golfer in my city. My sister Heidi was not able to attend this evening, but she always wished the best for me and was happy to hear that I was being inducted today. When I was uh, 
I just graduated from eighth grade from St. Mary's School. It was during the summer. And uh, I asked my dad, hey, can I drive the truck to the golf course? And we only lived two blocks. And uh, he said, you don't have a driver's license. I said, there's nobody around. It's just two blocks. He said, okay, go ahead. So I took this little Datsun pickup that uh, we owned and a uh, little four speed. So I went golfing, spent all day practicing. I'm driving back home and I'm just around the corners. Like I said, it's just two blocks and all of a sudden behind me, the red lights go on, it's a police officer. Uh -oh. Pulls me over, basically almost across the street from my parents' house. And uh, he tells me, hey, can I see your driver's license? I said, well, I don't have a driver's license. Well, what are you doing? I said, I, I, I went to go play golf. Does your dad know you have the truck? I'm thinking, oh, okay. I said, uh, yes. He goes, okay, get out of the truck. So I get out of the truck, and as I get out of the truck, I'm standing and he's looking at me, and all of a sudden, he started noticing, like, I, I just kind of start shrinking a little bit. And he backs away and he looks at me and he goes, are you wearing golf shoes? And I said, yeah. And I, it's the one with the metal spikes. And I saw I was on the asphalt. It was like 100 degrees, so I'm sinking. <laughs> so, so he goes, well, you're not lying. You know? And I go like, no, no. And he goes, I just, he goes, okay, look, just get back in the truck. And I said, okay, can you help me get out, you know, get out of these shoes? And I said, okay, get out of the shoes. He says, I'm gonna watch you drive back home, but don't you, do that again until you get your driver's license. I said, okay. He goes, and you know what? I wish you the best of luck. I hope you become a good golfer, okay? I said, thank you very much, officer. Um, when I played four years of golf, um, I had some great teammates. One of my, one, uh, a very good teammate of mine was my brother, Eddie. Carl Comer, who was uh, inducted last year. Danny Ortiz, who was inducted today, just to name a few. During my uh, sophomore year on the golf team, um, we played second in the area golf tournament and earned a spot to play in the Valley Championships. Our golf team is the only team to qualify for the Valley Championships and is considered the best golf team from Delano ever. What happened was when we were getting ready to uh, go to the uh, Valley Championships, Carl Colmer, a teammate, is uh, parents owned the uh, mortuary across the street from uh, Memorial Park. So teammates were saying like, hey, uh, well, you know, what time are we leave for the tournament? Uh, asking the coach and he said, this time. And then he said, hey, let's do something special. He goes, well, what's that? He said, hey, we asked Carl, hey, hey, do you think your dad would let us borrow the limousine? The one that, the, the one that follows the hearse, right? It takes the pallbearers. And he goes, I, you know, I'll ask it. So he said, hey, that'd be neat. I mean. We're going to the Valley Championships as a team. Let's, let's see. So he asks his dad, he says, yeah, that's fine. So they all meet at the school, we pile in, and we're leaving to Bakersfield, North Kern, and uh, for the Valley Championships. And the coach is driving and we go like, hey, what's taking so long? And he goes, I'm flooring it. It won't go any faster. And then Carl says, hey, this, this is a, we do funerals. This car only goes maybe 40 miles an hour at the most. <laughs> so we're on the freeway and everybody's passing as the board. <laughs> so we, we drive to the parking lot and there's a limousine and of course there's tinted windows and we can see the golfers getting out of their vans and stuff in the parking lot and they're looking at us like, you know, what's going on? And, and here we get out and uh, open the trunk and then they're looking at us and get our bags and we're starting to walk in and the other, the other teams are asking, hey, what school are you guys from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're Delano High School Tigers. <laughs> so um, that, that, was, that was one of the funniest times we've had as a, as a team. That, that was nice. Um, you know, uh, my son already talked about uh, um, some of the things I, I did in golf, and one of the things that uh, they got me there, just like any athlete, uh, that uh, practices and, and the rewards are that it pays off when you put in the practice. And I remember practicing on Sundays. I used to hit a lot of hundreds of golf balls be behind the boys' uh, um, basketball gym. It was the uh, practice football field. And I'd be out there for hours. And, and by the time I had the driver's license, I would ask my, 
my dad, I said, can I take the car? So I can go practice. And he says, okay, but you better be practicing. And I'd be out there hitting balls in the, on, on a Sunday afternoon, 100 degrees, practicing, getting ready, preparing myself for my last year in high school. And my parents would drive through and check me out and see, make sure I was there. And so um, they knew that I had, uh, I was dedicated to the game of golf. I love golf. Um, my cheerleader in high school and wife, Arlene, caught the, call, the golf fever. She's right here, standing right there. Wow, okay. Uh, we've been married for over 42 years and enjoying retirement playing golf together. Now, whenever we go anywhere, she asks, where are we gonna play golf at? Where are we gonna play golf at? Before it used to be, you go play golf, I'm going shopping. Not anymore. My son, Aaron, is a newcomer and becoming a better golfer all the time. When I see my son hit a golf shot, it reminds me of when my dad and I would play golf together. I get a lot of joy out of that, and it brings back a lot of memories being with my dad. My daughter, Aubrey, back there, isn't into golf too much, but she's our cart girl with cold beverages to deliver. <laughs> and last is my goddaughter, Nicole Belarus. Likes golf, but she would prefer to buy Nike golf apparel. Boy, she's a shopping whiz. I mean, that, everything she texts me, she goes, hey, you know, what do you think about these golf shoes? And she buys all golf apparel, but she only plays golf maybe once or twice a year. During my high school years, we would go to Tony's Pizza Parlor after football and basketball games and school dances and hang out with our school friends. It's ironic that here we are at a pizza parlor being inducted to the Delano High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Boy, full circle, right? I would like to wish all fathers a very happy Father's Day this Sunday. Thank you and good evening to everyone. Straight all year long, except you can't keep me straight. Okay. Archie, thank you. As uh, was said, keep them straight. I'm going to keep them straight and narrow. I uh, just, uh, just want to thank everybody for showing. But one quick thing all inductees, please do not leave. Stay put. Come to the front so you can take a picture. So, all inductees, please do that group shot. Once and for all, group shot. I got Mr. Hill looking at me like, hey, oh, God damn, what are you doing out here? <laughs> <laughs> He's a mean one. <laughs> well, Ruby and I go way back. We go way back. But um, no, it's been a joyful to see the old stories of old athletes. And, and, and it was us, this type of crew, that invited the, the females to be part of this Hall of Fame. Because again, there was a lot of great female uh, sport persons out here. I remember the Lowry's. The Breville, all those, but, uh, but again, they will come through a year, you'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame. But uh, again, I got something that that I saw on a table, the Hall of Fame ribbon. And if you want, there's only 100 left. <laughs> first come, first serve. So I know Ruby's going to run all well, the way. Give me one of those right now. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Always give me, give me, give yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Always give me, give me. But again, it, it's, it's good to see uh, Jerry, the track coach. Jerry, what type of season did you have this year? There you go, guys. You know, sometimes these athletes are, take a lot of time and effort. And one of them mentioned that some, we've got to take, get the kids off the, off the TVs and into the fields. Right now, I've got a group of about, about Six teams playing baseball right now. It's 98 degrees in the weather right now, and they're sucking it up. Because why? They love the game. We make sure they love the game. And also, we love athletes. But at the same time, we've done some great things here academically at Delano. Delano's been voted as the top high school in the, in the 
in this world knew the gold medal winner. So academically, we do fantastic. Athletically, we're there. We're getting there. Uh, but again, when you have two schools, two other schools, it separates the talent pool. It's a tough deal, but we're making it there. And if you want to, we're, we're building homes in Delano, guys. If you, if you want to buy a home, get in line right now. <laughs> I, if, I, if I know Anthony, he has something to do with it. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, bring back your grandkids. Oh, besides, there's a, a Delano team from, from, from Delano here, Cedar Chavez High School, that took a state champ in baseball. And I know that Mr. Norio is going to say something about Liberty. But, but below that hat, though, it has, he has DT on it. But anyway, it was fun having you guys back in town. Come back and see us again. Don't be shy. And bring a friend next time. And, and uh, I guess this is the largest crowd we've had, 130 people, 170, 200 people. So we're here. Anyway, let me introduce Mr. Morrison. Mr. Morrison is also the photographer, but also he's the chairman of the our board. Yeah. He's, he's a hustler. He's over 24/7 doing the mill, uh, doing the, the uh, pictures of, of the band and, and any athletic event there is. But again, you got to have that school spirit, and he has it. But again, keep on doing it again. But again, uh, I'm gonna say hi and bye, and we'll be excited for us to leave. So enjoy your way out. Be careful when you go home. Uh, remember, uh, inductees, stay put. Just take a picture and enjoy. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And if you want one of these, right here. in the corner right. over here. Yeah. It's dry. It's dry.